Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to another quick lecture, and this time I'm going to answer a question from England. Dr. Hilton Patel is about to treat a patient with implants, and he had some questions about the case and how to handle the sinus lift. So thank you, Hilton, for your email, and I'll definitely give you my thoughts and my opinion, and thank you also for allowing me to share this case with the surgical master community. I hope this is very helpful to you with your procedure. So Hilton sent me a periapical radiograph of the area he's about to treat, and some of you may be wondering, is that enough? What can you really learn from a periapical? So you can learn a lot. There are a lot of important details, very pertinent data in one image that can help you plan the case, and I'd like to share this with you. So the first thing that we're looking at is there are three teeth missing, one molar and two premolars, and the second molar is already in some sort of mesial drift, and that's going to restrict your restorative space. So I'd like you to take this into account when you plan your case. Number two, I can outline the ridge and outline the sinus floor, and we can already tell that there is sinus proximity there's going to be a challenge in terms of the vertical dimension, in terms of placing implants. I can also outline the soft tissue, and we can tell that there are different levels of thickness, and maybe it's getting a little bit thick, thinner closer to the canine. And as a periodontist, if I'm correct, there could be a piece of calculus on the mesial of number two, so that would be a good timing to scale in root plane and make sure that the adjacent teeth to the surgical site are free of any contaminants. And so if I'm correct, then scaling root planing would be the next step. And we can tell that the ridge is in some areas adequate for implants, and in other areas it's deficient because of the maxillary sinus. And we're talking only about the vertical dimension at the moment. And I'm also looking at an area uh, right in the middle of the ridge, and that could be a septa uh, which is basically a divider inside the sinus. It actually can progress from lateral to media, medial, uh, to the medial wall of the sinus. And that is a source of complications, especially when you do a direct sinus lift. If you uh, fail to recognize it, that could potentially lead to the perforation of the membrane and, and other problems. So uh, we can definitely find out on a CT scan. So you can tell that there's a lot of data in one periapical radiograph. And really at the moment, we have two main questions about the case. The first question is, how many implants can we place? And ideally, I'd like to have one implant per tooth, and that makes uh, more sense mechanically. We'll see if this is feasible. And the other question is, how do we handle the proximity to the sinus? Basically, what type of sinus lift procedure can we do? What are the options for this case? So in regards to the number of implants, I mentioned to you that ideally we should have three. Let's see if it's feasible. So the first implant that is important is at the number five location. It looks like an adequate area for an implant, at least in the vertical dimension. We may need to do a little bit of a sinus lift, um, not, not too much. And the second implant that is critical is in the molar location. And we can tell that we'll need to do a greater sinus lift in this area. Now the question is, can we really fit another implant in between the two? That's a good question. Um, we need to find out if it's feasible surgically, meaning if there's enough spacing between the implants. We'd like to have three millimeters of space. And also, is there enough room restoratively to restore three implants? Is that a challenge? So in order to answer these questions, we can definitely use a diagnostic wax up, and I uh, discussed this with Hilton. He actually sent me a tooth setup, which is a quick and easy way to assess the space. So if you look very carefully, he placed three teeth. It looks like denture teeth, and you can tell that the space is inadequate. You can barely fit a molar. He had to uh, trim it back, and he had to position the premolars in a way based on the patient's occlusion, uh, that was very crowded, and that tells us that there's not enough restorative space to, to, to restore with normal size molars and premolars. So we're like, likely looking at 
um, three, three premolar size teeth based on what I see here, but Hilton will be uh, the judge of it. So it seems to me that the more reasonable option for, for this particular case is to place only two implants in the molar position and number five position and restore with a three unit bridge. And again, likely we'll, we're looking at three premolar size teeth and I think this is one of the more reasonable options. So this is the question, uh, the answer in regards to the question about the number of implants. I believe two implants are, are very adequate and very reasonable to be placed. The second question was, how do we address the sinus proximity? What do we do in regards to a sinus lift? So again, let's start with a, uh, outlining the floor of the sinus and the septa, just to give us uh, an idea where they're located. And starting with the number five implant, we likely will need to do a minor sinus lift uh, and an osteotome technique is very adequate, like you indicated in your email and we can get a reasonable length of an implant, probably an 11.5 or even 13, uh, by doing a very minor sinus augmentation. The more challenging area is to uh, augment the sinus in the number three location. Uh, so you can definitely use an osteotome technique that works very well if you do it carefully, you follow all the rules. Just keep in mind that when you augment the sinus with an osteotome technique, if I'm correct and there is a septa right in here, a divider, when you augment the sinus, the bone graft material will be pushed against the septa, so you will not get the typical dome that you see for a sinus lift, but you get a different pattern. So that's one option. Or you can choose to use a lateral window technique where you will make a window in the lateral wall of the sinus and uh, push the window inwards uh, at the same time reflecting the sinus membrane. Uh, if you choose to do a lateral window, you need to be very careful in regards to the outline. Uh, the lower border or the coronal border of the window has to be about one millimeter above the sinus floor, around that. But even more critical is the mesial part of the outline because you want to be away from the septa right in here. So about a millimeter away is very, very reasonable. If not, you can face either a perforation or a challenge or basically you will create the, um, the window in bone. So the next logical step, in my opinion, is to order a CT scan. What I'd like you to do is study the sinus, study the exact dimensions of the ridge, uh, find out where the sinus floor is and uh, definitely look into the presence or the absence of a septa. And then based on your experience level and your expertise and uh, your knowledge and what you feel comfortable, then you can decide what is the best way to augment the sinus. So there's no right or wrong. Uh, it's very reasonable to augment the sinus with a, an indirect sinus lift or a crestal approach uh, that you mentioned in your email for both implants, or you can mix and match. You can do an osteotome technique for the number five and a lateral window on the number three. So uh, the, the choice is really yours. In future presentations, I'm going to show you these techniques step by step and how we can uh, perform it very predictably and uh, also uh, without uh, too many complications. So this is a recent case that I treated, it actually happens to be my father was missing also three teeth, number three, four, and five. And in his particular case, I performed an indirect sinus augmentation for the uh, premolars or premolar and you can tell that uh, the sinus is being augmented. You see the typical dome, and I'll show you again in future lectures and coaching programs, I'm going to show you how this works. And for the molar, I used a direct approach. I created a window and lifted the sinus membrane and placed uh, the implant at the same time and got good stability. So this is the case how it was completed. By the way, he had a lot of um, surgical and restorative space, so the decision was made to place three implants. That's a little bit different than Hilton's case. So again, in future lectures and presentations, I'm going to go over these techniques step by step and teach you everything that I know how to handle similar situations. So uh, I'm also going to show you how this uh, works in a computer-guided way, so we can do the augmentation, place the implants very accurately, uh, very precisely, into position and do it all at the same time. 
So Hilton, I hope this presentation was very useful to you. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to email me and I, I'm happy to uh, share uh, your CT scan if you, if you get one uh, with the uh, community and go over this and give you some additional advice. And I hope this was also helpful to everybody watching this presentation. If it was, feel free to share this with your friends and colleagues. Uh, definitely go to surgicalmaster.com and you can opt in and sign in for the weekly blog and email. Be on our list, be in touch. And if you have additional questions, you can feel free to email me. I may be able to, to do the same thing. I may be able to create a custom-made presentation based on your question. So I hope this was valuable and I look forward to working with you and seeing you in the future.